In this video, I will explain all about YAML. We will see what YAML is used for and we'll go through the syntax of how to write a valid YAML file. As you've seen in my tutorial videos about Docker, Kubernetes, Ansible, Prometheus, etc., I have shown example configuration files all written in YAML because it has become a pretty widely used format for writing configurations for many different DevOps tools and applications. That's why when using these tools, it's important to understand the details of YAML syntax and its main concepts. Generally speaking, YAML is a serialization language, just like XML and JSON. A serialization language basically means that applications written with different technologies languages, etc., which have different data structures, can transfer data to each other using a common, agreed on, or a standard format. And the most popular such formats are YAML, JSON, and XML. And the name YAML actually stands for YAML Ain't Markup Language. And you can create YAML file with one of those two extensions. They're the same. One of the main reasons of why YAML's popularity has increased so much over the past years is that it's super human readable and intuitive, which makes it a great fit for writing configuration files for all those recent DevOps tools, like I mentioned, Docker, Kubernetes, etc. So to show you an example and also comparison between YAML, XML and JSON formats, Let's consider this example. So this is how YAML file would look like. It's very straightforward. It's pretty clean. This is the same data in XML format where you have this uh, so-called tags and then you have the JSON format. And as you see in XML and JSON, data structures are defined using special characters. In XML, you have so-called tags with angle brackets. In JSON, you have curly brackets and in YAML, you don't have those special characters. So how data structure is defined in YAML is through line separations and spaces with indentations. That's why you can indent and space in XML and JSON as you wish, but in YAML, you get a validation error if you have one single space and data structure wrong, which may be a little bit annoying, but it makes YAML format the cleanest, most human readable format of all three. So what are some of YAML's use cases? To count a few, YAML format is used for Docker Compose files, for Ansible, Prometheus, Kubernetes, and many more tools. Okay, so now that you know what YAML is and where it's used, let's dive into its syntax. So let's start with the basic syntax, which is simple key value pairs. So let's take an example that I just showed you and let's write key value pairs like app, and let's call it user authentication. And uh, we have a port, let's put it at 9000 and version of the app at 1.7, just an example. So these are simple key value pairs. This is how YAML file is written and you have different data types here. We have a string, which note that we don't have to enclose it with quotes. You can, if you want to, so you can use either double quotes or single quotes or no quotes at all. And you have the number representations as well. If you need to use some special character like line carriage, for example, uh, then you have to enclose it in strings. Otherwise YAML cannot recognize it. But other than that, you don't need quotes. So I'm going to mention here that in YAML, you also have comments. So um, everything that starts with this uh, sign or with this character, basically YAML interprets as a comment. So I can write a comment here and basically I can use this comment between the attributes anywhere in YAML file where I want uh, to make my file even more readable and understandable. So this is a simple list of key value pairs. What you can do is you can group them inside of an object. So you can create an object in YAML and you can do that by indenting this individual key value pairs and enclosing it in an object. And let's call it a microservice like this. And this becomes an object with microservice with its attributes. And note that the space has to be exactly same for each attribute within the object. And also note that because YAML is so sensitive about the spaces and indentation, it's always a good idea to use a YAML validator 
before you, for example, execute a configuration file in uh, Kubernetes or you apply that or use that file to be sure that your indentations are right. And there are online tools for that. One of them which I use is this one here, but there are some other online tools as well. I can link them in the description. So what you can do is you can just copy that and it tells you that it's valid. If I, for example, did this, it's gonna scream bad indentation. So you can check your validity here. So let's go back. In YAML, you can also have lists. So for example, if I have multiple microservices like this, I can create a list of those microservices simply by using dash. So like this, and again, important thing that those attributes stay at the same level and the dash is right here. And you can also have Boolean values. So for example, if we have deployed attributes, you can say true or false. And in uh, YAML, you can also express Boolean expressions with yes or no. So let's say deployed yes, and also with on and off. So all these three pairs of values are expressions of Boolean values. Um, and you also see the syntax highlighting is different. So this is a list and these are the items of the list and I can add second item app, app let's say shopping cart whatever and, and let's say port is 9002 then we have version which is 1.9 and this way you can define lists of objects but you can also define lists of simple values so for example if you had a list of just the microservice names, you could do like this. And that would be fine as well. And you can also use lists inside of a list item. So for example, if you have multiple versions of a shopping cart, for example, that you want to list here for some reason, I don't know, you can actually list them here. So I can do versions. Let's say you have 2.0 and then you have 2.1, etc. And I'm going to copy that also in the validator. And here you see that the dash position, you can actually use different indentations for that. So I have an indentation here, but I don't have here. So that's fine as well. I could do like this or I can align it on the parent uh, attribute. So don't be confused if you see different alignments of the lists, both work because YAML recognizes that it's a list item. What will not work is if you don't align the list items using indentation. So for example, if it was one space off, then the validator will be red. So some small details there. Also know that if you have primitive items in the list, like this one, for example, so not the object items, but the primitive ones, you can also express it in a different way. And this is how, with the different syntax, you have square brackets and you can put those values inside, like a list, which makes it actually more readable if you have just simple data types and not objects. Let's validate that as well to make sure. You can have strings here as well, or a mix of them, doesn't matter. Now, this is really some of the basics of YAML syntax. Um, so to make it more practical and realistic, let's actually look at a real Kubernetes YAML example to see how this basic syntax is expressed there. So I'm going to clean this up and let's look at a pod configuration. So this is basically the main part where the metadata and kind, etc., is defined. As you see, these are super simple key value pairs. And then you have this object that we just saw with hierarchy, with indentations. So you have a metadata object and inside that you have another labels object. And here you have the specification and containers. Maybe you're familiar with this already. And in containers is a list. So each container item, so to say, has to start with dash and indentation. And there we have the name of the container, have the image, let's use Nginx. Then you have ports, which is another list. So again, we start with dash to list the ports. 
And then you have the attribute, which is container port value there. Inside container, you also can have volume mounts, which is another list. So here you list all your volumes. And this is a list of objects. Again, we have key value pairs. Let's use, I don't know, nginx volume and mount path. some example, and this is how a pod configuration will look like. So you have, again, basic building blocks, key value pairs, objects, and lists, and then lists inside of that list item. And since containers is also a list, you can have multiple containers inside. And for example, if I were to define a sidecar container, I would have another item expression dash, and here I would say, this is my sidecar container. And again, image, some image, etc. Also another example that I also showed in one of my videos is where we deployed a curl image as a sidecar. And inside of that container configuration, we also had these two lines. I'm actually going to copy them. And here you see that this is this alternative syntax of defining lists. So arguments is a list and we use it like this. And then we have the two items here, one and two. So knowing how YAML syntax works should make it easier to understand the Kubernetes configuration file structure better. Another important concept of YAML syntax is when you have multi-line strings. So for example, file contents, multi-line string, let's call it the, the attribute. And instead of writing this multi-line string here with the carriage, I can write it actually on multiple lines like this. So I don't need that thing anymore. So this is a multi-line string and this is the next line, etc. Right? And the way I can do that is using the pipe symbol. So YAML will see that character and will interpret everything here as a multi-line text. So these line breaks will actually stay. Another case could be if you have this super long string, which has to be on a single line. So for example, this is a single line string that should be all on one line and some other stuff. Let's put dots here. And in that case, obviously you want the line carriages here, but you also don't want to write this all out on one line because it's just not very readable. And that's why you want to for readability, you still want to display that here in the YAML file itself, but you want YAML to interpret it as a single line. In this case, instead of pipe, you actually replace it with a greater than sign or with this uh, angle bracket, and this will be interpreted as single line. Now, this is just some random example, so let's actually see some real use cases. I have a config file YAML here from Kubernetes, which I have used in one of my tutorial videos. And here you see the basic key value stuff. And here you have the name of the attribute. You can call it whatever you want. And here we use that pipe. And these are actually the contents of the file. This is going to be displayed exactly like this with line carriages, because this has to be each one on its own line. And this way you can actually write configuration files for different applications. Like this one is for Mosquito. You also have uh, maybe Fluentd and they have their own different formats. And you can write the whole thing as a file represented by multi-line string in YAML. Another example of using this multi-line string that you may actually encounter in Kubernetes configuration files is this one right here. So this is part of configuration of a pod. So you have this command attribute and here you see the uh, familiar list. And here again, you have this pipe that 
is followed by a multi-line string. And this is an example of Kibana that I found. So basically what it does is that it executes a shell command and this is a shell script. So you can actually put the whole contents of a shell script as you would have that as a shell script file after that pipe symbol as a multi-line text. And this will execute as a shell script basically. One thing that I've also needed to use in YAML was environmental variables. So for example, you have a pod that has environmental variables uh, defined inside and you have to use one of those inside the pod configuration. You can actually access them using a dollar sign inside your YAML configuration. So this is an example of a MySQL pod. And here the same thing that I showed you before. So you have the command and here in this line, we're executing a MySQL command and I am accessing the environmental variable that is available inside the pod using the name of the environmental variable and the dollar sign before that, which if you need that might come in handy because I believe this specific concept of using environmental variables in YAML isn't very well documented. YAML also has a concept of placeholders. One of his use cases is in Helm, for example, and this is how it looks like. So basically, instead of directly writing the values inside, you define placeholders and the syntax for using placeholders is double curly braces around that placeholder. And this value gets replaced using template generator. And I believe the same concept is used in Ansible as well. So again, if you use Helm or Ansible, for example, and you see the syntax, you should know what it stands for. And lastly, inside one YAML file, you can actually define multiple components and you can separate these components using three dashes like this. So for example, if I have a YAML file where I want to put all my configurations, I can separate them using these three dashes and this will be a valid YAML. And this can be very handy in Kubernetes, especially where you have multiple components, maybe for one service and you want to group them in a single YAML file. So for that use case, this is the way to go. Maybe an interesting note here is that in all my Kubernetes videos, I have used YAML format to write Kubernetes configuration files. However, you can also write Kubernetes configuration files in JSON format. For example, if I head over to my dashboard and I click to edit one of my components, I see that I have both YAML and JSON format available, which I can edit directly. Or if I want to create a new element or new component, I can provide either YAML or JSON. But I personally use YAML because as I mentioned, it's cleaner and more readable, but you can actually use both. So this was it for YAML tutorial video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.